Hey guys, and welcome to my first time watching this episode of Star Trek The Original Series, Season 3, which is called For the World is Hollow and I Have Touched the Sky. I've never heard of this phrase before. I'm guessing it might be from some author, a quote from some book or something like that, um, or maybe a famous historical figure. Um, we'll have to see uh, at the end if I have time to research it, though I am kind of short on time right now. So with that being said, let's get into the episode. Hope you guys enjoy. Don't recognize those little guys. Missile spread, Mr. Spunk. Very archaic type, Captain. Sublight speed. Those are missiles? Fire phases. <laughs> Turned him to dust. You're excused. You may return to your quarters. No, I'm sorry, Doctor. I have called the captain and I'll wait until he comes. What's going on here? I promise you I'll give the captain a full report. Well, that was strange. That was quite a scene. It was. I've just completed the standard physical examinations for the entire crew. The crew is fit. I found nothing unusual, with one exception. Xenopolysithemia. It has no cure. He has one year to live at the most. Who is it? The ship's chief medical officer. No wonder she was so upset. I would be too. That's a long title. <laughs> I have just had the sad duty of informing Starfleet about Dr. McCoy's condition and have requested an immediate replacement. Oh. An asteroid, 200 miles in diameter. The asteroid is the missile's point of origin. Correct, Captain. There must be some kind of something in there, inside. It is pursuing an independent course through this solar system. A source of power? Atomic. Very archaic. Asteroid has an outer shell, which is hollow. Sensors read no life forms. Course of asteroid 241 Mark 17. Would put it on a collision course with Darren 5. Population approximately 3,724,000,000. Clark and I are transporting aboard. Mr. Scott, you have Let's a go. Out. Let's check it out. What are we going to find? I'm intrigued. Like, what's inside this thing? A lot can happen in a year. Give yourself every minute. You leaving already? Mr. Spock and I will handle this. Without me, Jim, you'd never find your way back. Oh, he wants to go. I'm fine, Captain. All right, Doctor. If that's what you want. One fails to see the logic in making a ship look like a planet. That is strange. Well, maybe the inhabitants weren't supposed to know that they were on a spaceship. Like there were captives or a group of people that were born in this thing and just always thought they were on a planet. Still no sign of life forms, Captain. Whoa. How did they... Did... How did... Hello? I love the bright colors on their outfits. What are they wearing on their heads, though? Oh, there it goes! <laughs> oh! They have swords. What? <laughs> what is on their head? <laughs> Let me go to my friend. You alright? I think so. Just a little bump on the head. I am Matera. The high priestess of the people. Welcome to the world of Yonada. Everyone's so colorful. I'm so glad this came out when color TV was like first getting popular. And we get all these bright colors because of that. Gotta sell them TVs. She is, uh, her outfit is a lot different from theirs though. It's more neutral colors and um, metallic. Love her hair. You will kneel. Ah. So we found the sun worshippers. For real this time. These people don't know they're on a spaceship. They've been in flight 10,000 years. See? For what reason do you visit this world? Well, you shot at us. In friendship. Then learn what it means to be our enemy. Oh my goodness. We are learning very much how to be your enemies. <laughs> you shot at us, you attacked us with swords, and now you zapped us. Bones. Nothing 
else could have caused this, Captain. Nothing that has happened here. The shock mm -hmm. is serious because of McCoy's weakened condition. May I ask precisely what is troubling the doctor? I don't think he would have told you himself. Mm -mm. He never would tell Spock. Xenopolisithemia. I know of it, Captain. Then you know that nothing can be done. Oh. How is it? I'm all right. Are you all right, Mr. Spock? Very well, Doctor. Spock knows. Are you in any condition to get up? Don't worry, I can make it, Chip. For strength. Many of us have felt the power of our oracle. Does it cure Xeno... whatever? You are not of your nada. No, we're from outside your world. Where is outside? A whole universe. Outside, up there, everywhere. So they say also. <laughs> I climbed the mountains, even though it is forbidden. Did you touch the ceiling? Things are not as they teach us. For the world is how. And I have touched the sky. Oh, he did touch it. I was trying to remember what the uh, the title was. I just remembered the hollow part. Something under the skin. Ooh. He's dead. Oh. Wow. Find out that you were living on a big ball. Not a planet, but a spaceship. And that knowledge seems to be forbidden. Yeah, so who's doing this and why? What happened? We don't know. He just suddenly screamed in pain and died. <laughs> That's... That doesn't uh, make us look suspicious at all. Those of the people who sin shall be punished. Hmm. I guess this thing maybe happens sometimes. She doesn't seem too shocked by it. You do not seem well. Oh, no. I'm quite all right. Thank you. It is the will of the Oracle that you now be treated as honored guests. Can we meet this Oracle? It's Landru, isn't it? Lady did show a marked preference for your company. Well, now, nobody can blame her for that, can they? Personally, I find the lady's taste questionable, but she <laughs> obviously prefers you, and you obviously don't seem to mind. <laughs> obviously. Spock and I would be left alone to find the power controls of this world. That doesn't seem like such a bad deal. Go hang out with the pretty girl. You wouldn't mind if we looked around. Not at all. The people know of you now. <clears throat> Are you well enough to go about? Perhaps not. Then why not remain here? Rest. We will talk. We shall make him well. Well, I certainly hope so. Leave us. How did the Oracle punish the old man? I cannot tell you now. There is some way the Oracle knows what you say, isn't there? The Oracle knows the minds and the hearts of all the people. Coy, there is something I must say. Be careful what you say. Is there a woman for you? Oh, she's going straight for it. No, there is. Does McCoy find me attractive? Yes, I do. I wish you to stay here as my mate. Dang, what? Is she for real? I mean, who could blame her? But, I mean, for once, McCoy's getting the girl. I'm, I'm down. But we're strangers to each other. But is not that the nature of men and women? At first. That the pleasure is in the learning of each other? Mm-hmm. Yes. And since he won't be able to serve the, I mean, his replacement's already on the way. I wonder how many generations have lived out their lives without ever knowing that their world is hollow. The people in the fullness of time will reach a new world. You can share that world with me, rule it by my side. How long will it take you to reach this new world? The Oracle will only say soon. Hmm. Soon. Well, if you only knew how I needed some kind of future, Natura. You have lived a lonely life. Very lonely. There will be no more loneliness for you. There's something I need to tell you. I have an illness for which there is no cure. I have one year to live. Until I saw you, there was nothing in my heart. Now it sings. I could be happy to have that feeling for a day, a year. Well, where do we sign up? Where do we sign up? Oh, McCoy. <laughs> it's a kiss. The Oracle Room. It is moving kind of fast, though. <laughs> but we only have so much time in the episode. The 
writing is definitely Fabrini, Captain. I recognize it. But didn't the Fabrini sun go nova and destroy its planets? Some of them must have been put aboard this ship and sent to another planet. Is the Oracle another computer? So the sun went supernova. And they have like the sun worship thing going on. The Oracle doesn't seem to know we're here. The Oracle can't read their thoughts because they don't have the... Eight planets, Captain. And no doubt that they've been in flight on this asteroid ship for 10,000 years. Oh. <gasps> What's she gonna say? There is one called McCoy. I wish him to remain here. Oh. As my mate. Oh. I was wondering if she was being serious. He must become one of the people and agree to the insertion of the instrument of obedience. Oh, that's going to be a problem. I was wondering if she was going to, we were going to find out that she was actually being sincere. Oh! Or if like she and the Oracle were in on something. Kirk and Spock have committed sacrilege. You know what must be done. I know, fools. To think we are children. It's a long time to be zapped. What are you going to do to my friend? They entered the Oracle room. And the punishment is death? Yes. Please let them return to the ship. I cannot. I've made my decision. I'm staying here. But if she goes against the Oracle, then he'll take her out. How do you think I'd feel if I stayed here with a chance to be happy for the first time in my life? But knowing my friends had died. So be it. This I will do for McCoy. Hmm. For our happiness and future. I'm not sure if you have a future if you go against this Oracle. You better be careful, girl. Bones, this isn't a planet, it's a spaceship on a collision course with Darren Five. I'm on a kind of a collision course myself, Joe. Hmm. Bones, if we can't correct the course of this ship... We'll have to blow it up? We'll have to blast it out of space. The Tura's asked me to stay, and I'm staying. As her husband? Yes. It's the fastest marriage proposal I've ever seen. Then transport Mr. Spark and myself immediately. But, Captain, what about Dr. McCoy? He's staying, Scotty. Check out. This episode is going in a very interesting direction, like different from any other episode. Feels really fresh. Do you now give your consent? I do. Proceed. Mm. I mean, I can't blame him for not being able to say no to that. <laughs> All that. We are now of one mind. One heart. One life. I mean, what is logic when you have one year to live? Things change. To be opened and read when we reach the new world of the promise. Do the people know the contents of their book? Only that it tells of our world here, and why soon, one day, we must leave it for the new world. Hmm. Don't you long to know its secrets? No. I don't think McCoy could be happy here. You have been relieved of all responsibility for the asteroid ship Yonada. Starfleet Command will take care of the situation. Hmm. Starfleet's taken over. McCoy has like a... a inqu inquisitiveness and a curiosity. He can't just blindly follow orders. Also, he doesn't have his, like, medical tools and stuff. An urgent call from Dr. McCoy, sir. Did he read it? We may be able to get these people back on course. But I've seen the book that contains all the knowledge of the creators. And if you... Uh, see? Where is it? Ah! Oh! Oh. Uh, Bones, are you all right? No, he's not all right. Killers of your friend. I will have you put to death. What did he do? You released him from his vow of obedience. We have freedom. He took it out? That was it? Oh. Oracle room. You will never see the book. It is sacrilege. Stop! 
You must believe that what I'm about to tell you is the truth. How can you understand my world? I understand. 10,000 years ago, a sun was dying, and with it, its world. It's the world you see on the plaque. That is the world of which Yonada is a part. No. Mm -mm. Oh, they think they're, they're there with their son. You wish me to believe that Yonada is a ship? Well, yeah. Yes. Does she even know what a ship is? And at night, I see the stars. No. Take her to the top of the mountain. You are living inside a hollow ball. Oh, she's starting to doubt. Why should the truth wait for you to come to Yonada? Yonada will kill millions of people and destroy a world it doesn't even know. You do not speak the truth. I believe only the oracle. Let us remove the instrument of obedience. Oh. You should, you should do it. Do you think she understood me? I think you gave her something to think about. He said they spoke the truth. Their truth. Is truth not truth for all? The truth of Yonada is your truth. There can be no other for you, obedience. That's illogical. You must know the truth of the world. Uh-oh. I, I believe you. Oh, that's a death sentence. I believe there's nothing I can do. Take the thing out. Oh. The book is in the monolith. Okay, they're all safe from the Oracle's stuff. We mean no desecration to the faith of Yonada. We must consult the book to help you. The punishment is death. Oh. Yep, I guess we're not safe. Turning this place into an oven. McCoy, how do you open this thing? Temperature 115 degrees. I mean, that's just the summer in California right there. 120 degrees. Okay, now we're getting a little Death Valley territory. <laughs> what a slow and agonizing way to die that would be, though. Sheesh. It refers to the altar. Apply pressure to the center until it opens. They didn't think to just press the button. <laughs> Ooh. Yep, it's Landrew. I've neutralized the heating elements. And will they send this... this ship... again to the land the creators intended? Yes. There seems to be a weakness in one of the eight tubes. Enough to turn it off course? Yes. Well, then come. We must hurry to join... No. Them. I cannot go with you. I understand the great purpose of the creators. I shall honor it. I shall stay willingly. And because that is what I must do. Then Respectable. I won't leave you. Oh, well. He still has one year to live. You came here with a great mission. To save my people. Shall I abandon them? Perhaps one day you will find your Nada again. Oh, this is so sweet. I love her. Oh, she's... She's just precious. Guidance controls taking over. I believe we can allow the ship to go back to its automatic control. What about the Oracle, though? Their banks contain the total knowledge of the Fabrini. And they seem to have amassed a great deal of medical knowledge. And the cure. Man, the way he's his illness is progressing, you'd think that he had a lot less than a the year. The white corpuscle count is back to normal. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Spock, for bringing back the knowledge of the Fabrini. Coy, the Fabrini descendants are scheduled to debark on their promised planet in approximately 390 days. I think that we could manage to be in that vicinity at that time. <laughs> a neat episode. I liked it. Yeah. I really liked that episode for a number of reasons. I love a McCoy-centered episode. I love that he got a little romance. 
We got to see like a little bit of a different side of him. Natira, I think her name was, was gorgeous. I loved her hair. I loved her outfit. She was beautiful and she was so sweet. I thought the romance was a little bit fast, but it's something that I've kind of expected uh, out of necessity for these episodes being just one episode. And um, unless they were to focus solely on the romance, they wouldn't have time in the episode for anything else. So they just have to really like compress that kind of storyline into a very short amount of time. I just really appreciated that McCoy got to get in on some of the uh, lady action because Kirk has had it many times, even Spock, um, uh, uh, at least two or three times that I can think of. And this was a big one for Bones. We had another Landru, which now every time we go against a computer, uh, they're going to be a Landru, I think. <laughs> but I thought the the whole premise and everything and the thought of and just the whole thing with Bones being sick, only having one year to live, being left behind, even though it was only for like a short amount of time, him making the decision to be left behind. It made the episode feel unique, something a little bit different. Oh, and I was right about there being inhabitants that um, were unknowingly living in this spaceship that is made to look like they're on a planet. I don't want to say exactly what movie or video game that kind of had that similar premise that made me think of it right away, but there is a movie that I watched recently on the channel and then there is a game that I played in the last couple of years that have like some kind of premise like that. And you know, why else would they make it look like it was a planet when it wasn't unless there were some individuals living there unknowingly? Now, the title of the episode, I thought it was from something, a certain quote from a novel or from like some historical figure said, like I said, because it sounds very poetic. It sounds very familiar to me. And I know that Star Trek, the authors oftentimes pull from literature and phrases and things like that. But for this case, I couldn't find anything that had to do with this particular phrase except from this episode. But the thing that it reminded me of is I have no mouth and I must scream. I don't know why, it just has kind of a similar pattern to it. I have no mouth and I must scream. The sky is hollow and, or the world is hollow and I've touched the sky. I don't know, for some reason it reminded me of that. I actually never read that book. There's a book and then there's also a game that they made um, with that title that's probably based on the novel. I had to look it up because I wasn't really sure exactly what it was. Just from a quick Google search, I see that it is a post-apocalyptic science fiction short story written by American writer Harlan Ellison. Hmm, that name sounds familiar because we know that Harlan Ellison was involved with the writing of the script and and or the story of City on the Edge of Forever. So I definitely, since you guys know, I'm on my reading stint and I'm really trying to keep it going and, and not like get out of the habit of reading. I'm going to add this, especially since it's a short story, it should be a really quick read. I'm going to add this to my list of things that I want to read. So don't tell me anything about it, but I really want to um, to read this. So yeah, I'll, I'll read it next after I finish uh, Walden 2. And then I'll, I'll report back, okay? And I'll, I'll tell you guys my findings. So yeah, I think that's about it right now for this episode. Loved the premise, loved the ways that it felt new and fresh and different and the focus on McCoy. There were some things that were kind of reused, um, retread grounds when it comes to Star Trek, the original series, like the computer and the people being controlled by the computer, but they don't realize that they're being controlled by a computer and things like that. But aside from that kind of repetition, no real complaints from me about this episode. 
It was really cool. Hi, Marks from me. As always, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this episode. Is it ranked high for you? Maybe on the lower end? I know we all have our different opinions and preferences, and that's all very exciting to hear what everybody has to say. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the comments. Bye-bye.